Welcome to another engineering instructional snippet. This video will provide a step-by-step -step process to apply the integral form of conservation of momentum. Here are some prerequisites for you to get the most out of this snippet. The integral form of conservation of momentum. This is shown here. The vector dot product. And volume and surface integrals. What are the goals of this instructional snippet? We hope to provide guidelines that will be successful in applying conservation of momentum to control volumes. We will limit ourselves to steady state, and fixed non-deforming control volumes. Momentum is a vector so naturally the conservation law is a vector equation. It is shown here. If we denote the velocity vector as shown, then the x component of the integral conservation of momentum is as shown. The y and z components are similar but for brevity will not be shown here. Steady state will make the time derivative term zero as shown. This leads us to our first recommended solution step, solve the problem in component directions separately, for example, in the x direction, y direction, and the z direction. Next we should define a coordinate system and define the direction of gravity. Shown is a reducer that is connected to a 90 degree elbow. If we wanted to find the support forces on this section of pipe we will at least need to define an x direction and a y direction. That is our next recommended step. Define a coordinate system and the direction of gravity. I see a lot of student mistakes tied to skipping this easy step. Next we need to define and draw the control volume. There are several things to consider. What is the unknown? The control volume should be defined so the unknown naturally falls out in the application of conservation of momentum. External forces, we may need to be clever so that some forces become internal forces so we do not have to solve for them. Be aware that identifying the control volume and external forces may need to be done in unison. This leads to our next recommended step. Identifying the control volume and external forces. Let's get some practice by setting up the control volume to find the support forces necessary to hold this pipe reducer in place. We have several options. Option 1 is to define the fluid in the reducer as the control volume. We need to consider all of the external forces on our control volume. For now let's start with the x direction. Let's start with forces due to pressure acting on the control surface. We have a pressure force acting in the positive x direction at surface 1. We have a pressure force acting in the negative x directing at surface 2. Keep in mind the direction of pressure forces is always going into the control volume, don't get the signs wrong. There is also a force on the fluid due to its interaction with the wall of the reducer. Let's pause the external supporting force for the reducer is not acting on the control volume. Furthermore, we will likely not have enough information to solve for the distributed force between the fluid and the reducer wall. This control volume doesn't work. Let's try again. Option 2 is to define the reducer and the fluid as the control volume. Once again, we need to consider all of the external forces on our control volume. For now let's start with the x direction. Let's start with forces due to pressure acting on the control surface. We have a pressure force acting in the positive x direction at surface 1. We have a pressure force acting in the negative x directing at surface 2. The force on the fluid due to its interaction with the wall of the reducer is now an internal force and does not need to be calculated. We have an X component of the supporting force acting on the reducer, this force is our unknown. Now let's proceed to the Y direction. Force due to gravity, weight of the reducer and weight of the fluid. We also have a Y component of the supporting force acting on the reducer. Option 2 selecting both the reducer and the fluid as the control volume seems to work. But does it? We accounted for the pressure forces at points 1 and 2, but isn't there a pressure all around the reducer? The answer is yes, most likely atmospheric pressure. 
integrating that pressure over the outside surface could be complex and require a lot of info. Luckily we don't have to. The net force on an object due to surrounding static pressure is zero. This is not talking about wind forces on a sail, don't think of it that way. This leads us to the next important step to avoid related errors, always use gauge pressure so the surrounding pressure is zero. This is our next recommended step. Always use gauge pressure, i.e. PSIG, to calculate external forces due to pressure. Now let's look at the right hand side of the conservation of momentum equation. The surface integral will be zero over any surface that does not have fluid crossing its boundaries. Identify the areas that have fluid crossing the control surface. In this example there are two labeled points 1 and 2. First let's consider the dot product with the unit normal. It's a good idea to draw the unit normal vectors. Let's break the surface integral into the identified non-zero flow areas, in this example there are two. These are shown here. Next let's look at the first of these integrals individually. We will skip on the mechanics of actually performing the integration. To keep it simple we will assume that we are given uniform velocities. A lot of errors are made with the signs for the velocity and dot product terms. Let's look at surface 1. It is important to use the defined coordinate system. The x component of velocity at surface 1 is in the plus x direction, therefore it has a positive sign. At surface 1, the angle between the velocity vector and the unit normal vector is 180 degrees, the dot product returns a negative sign. Dropping the designation for the density at 1 for just density we are left with minus rho v1 squared times area 1. This is typically what we are left with for an inflow with the velocity in the positive x direction. We could do the same for the outflow at surface 2 but instead let's create a summary table. We will just consider the x direction, the same approach applies for the other coordinate directions y and z. Velocity direction, positive, inflow dot product sign is negative, the product is then negative. Velocity direction, negative, inflow dot product sign is negative, the product is then positive. Velocity direction, positive, outflow dot product sign is positive, the product is then positive. Velocity direction, negative, outflow dot product sign is positive the product is then negative. The above sign conventions are general. As you gain experience it may be a good idea to always be methodical with your signs. This leads us to update our list of recommended steps. Be careful of signs. The velocity components have signs consistent with the defined coordinate direction. The dot product in each integral has its own sign. Negative for inflow and positive for outflow. The overall sign is the product of the velocity component sign and the dot product sign. Certainly things can be more complex, the angle between the velocity component and the outward unit vectors are not always 0 or 180 degrees. In addition, the velocity distribution over a surface area is not always uniform, requiring a little more work in performing the integration. This was a fixed, non-deforming control volume, likely the simplest kind to analyze. I plan future examples that are more complex. The recommended approach to applying the integral form of conservation of momentum is repeated below. I hope you found this instructional snippet useful. I will have additional videos that will demonstrate the recommended approach to example problems. Please like and subscribe and have a great day.